Uh, I come from a pretty big family. Who else comes from a pretty big family here? Uh, I'm one of six. I got it. Yeah, one of six. They don't make them like that anymore. I, my mom is one of 11. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I have, my, I have my oldest sister, Georgine. I have my brother. Uh, his name is Edward. My sister actually nicknamed him uh, brother because she couldn't pronounce his name. And then I also have my brother, Jack, who actually, he's the one who got me into fitness. He's the one who uh, bought a weight set and then brought it to the house. When I was about the age of 13, I just wanted to bench press. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get underneath this thing and bench press. Of course, when you start out, you don't know what you're doing. And I got underneath the thing and the bar's up here and I'm going like this and I'm pushing it all over the place. So I, I had the big idea that I'm gonna go to 7-Eleven and get like muscle milk or something like that and think that's gonna make you lift more. But I come back and I did the, I did the weight, right? And then my brother, then I also had my brother David, and then I had my brother Eric, he's the youngest one. My dad used to call him the caboose, because he's like the youngest one, of course. He calls himself E-Rock, and he gave him that handle. I don't know what the hell that even means, but I call him, we all call him E-Rock. Uh, my mom was, you know, she was a caretaker, so for us, she was a stay-at-home mom. She, my dad used to work three jobs. He worked at Norwood Construction Site. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that place. But he was a foreman there. Then he would come home and he would fix lower outboard engines. And he picked that up, Chrysler outboard engines. And then also what we did was we ended up open, uh, opened up a bait and tackle shop that my, we, all sort of, we all ran. So like I said, my mom was the caretaker uh, of the house. But what ha ended up happening for my mom, she had open heart surgery. She had problems with her heart. And uh, over the years, she had a couple other problems. Um, there was one time I actually saw my mom in the middle of the night when I woke up. I saw her have a stroke. I saw her crawling around on the ground. So we, we had it tough. My mom had it really tough. She had to do a lot for us. Uh, one day, me and my brother were out. And we were about, what, I think 18 years old. We were coming home with a friend of ours from, I think it was Burger King or McDonald's, it doesn't matter which one it was. And we're fighting each other. <laughs> and we get home and we see a bunch of people there, a bunch of cars. And I'm thinking, okay, was well, there a party going on? Me and my brother say to ourselves, is there a party going on? We walk in the house and we're thinking, what's going on? My cousin runs up to me and she looks me straight in the eye and says, your brother died. It wasn't my mom that I thought it was, it was my brother. I dropped right to my knees and I started crying. See, the drugs are what took his life. It was the habits that he formed that took his life. And today I'm here to talk about how to change those bad habits and turn them into good habits. Now, before we start, I, you guys did just heat lunch. I want to I want to get the energy up a little bit. And I brought that story up because I wanted to make sure that you know that the bad hab habits you want to get rid of these bad habits. But I'm going to get the energy up. This is what we're going to do. So there's different breathing techniques you do that you can do to slow down your heart rate or speed it up. Okay. So if you want to calm down, and all the years of calming down, if somebody told you to calm down, did you calm down? No. So one technique is to breathe out r really slowly, and then take a breath in real quickly, right? Now, we're going to do the opposite right now. And the reason I want to do the opposite, I want you to guys to get up. I'm going to bring some dopamine. I'm going to release some dopamine in the brain. So we're going to breathe in really slowly. You guys can do that. I'm not going to do that. I want to keep myself calm. Breathe in really slowly, then breathe out fast. Breathe in really slow, and breathe out fast. Breathe in really slow, and breathe out fast. You feel yourself get up, breathe in a little slow. Now speed it up, breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. You feel lightheaded a little bit? Breathe out, breathe in. All right, all right, let's get up now. Come on, everybody get up. <laughs> get up. So we're going to stretch a little bit. We're all going to go. To, we're all going to stretch. It's going to help us out. Get us loosened up a little bit. Let's stretch to the. We're going to stretch to the left. Use your left, right? <laughs> Keep going. We're going to stretch this way all the way. Desk. 
Ah, I want to hear some noises back there. I'm going to lean back, lean back, lean back, the lower back. Oh, go down and come up and we do the snap. Come on, do it. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. You guys can take a seat. Thank you very much. So that's what we call a state change. A state change, and well, you guys, I, I know you're behind a computer sometimes and you're working from home. A state change is an immediate uh, uh, change in your state, and it actually helps with learning. So it also helps with fitness. If, if you want to get up, you just get yourself up, and you move through the breaths first. So on a physiological level, what, uh, what you can do is breathe to get yourself up, to move. Because not all the time, you get, your mindset, these things they call mindset games or changes and how you change your mindset when you're talking to yourself. You could do that, but when they don't work, the breathing techniques work that calm you down and speed you up. If I do those breathing techniques, I get myself up, I can talk real quick, or I can just slow down, right? So I uh, pulled this picture up, and I know you guys are talking about money today. That's what, it, that's what, it's all, that's what it's, uh, the course is about, but I'm here for the fitness. But I couldn't help myself. And I, when I looked at this picture, I got to put it up. I said, this looks just like Phil to me. And, uh, <laughs> and I haven't been to Phil's house, but I have a great imagination. I imagine he's sliding down, and he's coming on. He's, he's, sort of, he's, he's plugging in. He's doing all his, uh, you know, stock trading. <laughs> so we're talking about money, right? But we have needs, and we have wants. We take care of our needs, and then we have our wants. We want to be, why do people want money? Why do you want money? Why do you want money? We do it, we get money because we want to do the things we want when we want to do them, right? Needs, if, once you take care of your needs, you have those wants. We do that because we want to be happier. You want to be a happier version of yourself. So if you don't have your health, do you think you'd be happy? Do you think all the money in the world would make you happy? Do you, think, do you think what Brett was talking about earlier, you have the one side where you're alive and one side you're dead, and then what happens? Do you want to be on this side or do you want to be on this side? I want to be able to spend my money. I know that. I want to be alive. I want, I want to be able to hand my money down to my kids. Or I mean, some people don't want to do that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. So, so we want to fulfill life. We want to be able to go on adventures. Some of us, some of us want to you know, fulfill life. And that's very important to me. I know that for me, a fulfilled life is uh, a life of meaning. It's a life of relationships with family, a, life, a relationship with friends, with loved ones. So we want to live a fulfilled life. What I noticed is two of the biggest regrets of the dying that the dying have. I looked this up, and I was, I was really curious about this because I was, I was doing a lot of research. What are the two of the biggest regrets? Does anybody know? There's a button. Go ahead. More time for families, one of them? Regrets. That's a good one. 100% yeah, right. They, they wish they let themselves be more happier. They're staying stuck in old patterns uh, of habits, the so-called comfort zone, right? Of, of their emotion and their physical lives. So they, they realized that themselves, that they were stuck in these patterns and they were allowing themselves to be happier. And, and when you're happier, uh, it, it comes with health and fitness too, and not just having money and what we just talked about. So here it is right here. I wish I took better care of myself. This is one of them. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. So make sure you look after yourself. So what are the benefits of exercise? Anybody know? But besides, I mean, besides, so we also build a muscle, all right? Your heart's healthy, your mind's sharp. Yes, 100%. Do you know that exercise after the age of 30 is the only thing that helps out your cognitive ability to retain information and to keep your mind fresh? So all, everybody in here wants to make money and they want to, they're, not, they're some stock trading, they're doing real estate, they're doing deals, right? If you want to do all those things, you want to make sure that your mind is sharp. If your mind is not sharp, then you're, you're going to fall behind. The next guy is going to be taking your spot, OK? So the brain function, increase, uh, increase bone mass density. My dad had a girlfriend, and her mother was in her 90s. 
and she fell and she broke her hip. And when she broke her hip, guess what happened next? She passed away. Part of it is because of the bone mass density that her hip was weak. So you want to increase that bone mass density. <clears throat> of course, you get the perfect body shape. It, I mean, there's no such thing as perfect. We know that, right? But it, you want to be the best version of yourself. And that, when I wrote this book, Unleash the Ultimate You, I talked about that. You're, like, you, you're trying to be the best version of yourself. It doesn't matter what anybody else is. You don't have to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or you don't have to be like you know, The Rock or whatever. You, you want to be healthy. You want to be a better version of yourself. So these are some of the benefits for, of exercise. So only 23% of adults get enough exercise. That's, that's pretty crazy. Less than 5% adults participate in 30 minutes of daily ac activity. And then at least 48% of US adults have some cardiovascular disease. An estimated 80% of cardiovascular disease, including heart disease and stroke, are preventable. However, cardiova cardiovascular disease means the number one killer and the most expensive disease, costing nearly $1 billion. And we're all worried about wearing masks. I mean, you can't wear enough masks for this. It's just like you can't. You can wear, uh, you're, uh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> in a clinical study, regular exercise is as effective as antidepressants in reducing symptoms of mild to mild depression. Uh, and see, this is what I want to talk about when I talk about depression, when it comes to mild depression. One thing I want to say is that a lot of people think that. Uh, they, they had to feel good first in order to get to the part where they can exercise. It's actually quite opposite. You gotta get up and move to feel good. You can't wait for something to happen first. You gotta go and do, get away after it. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about habits today, creating these habits. So I, I found this by accident. It's not the diabetes, heart disease, and the BC that runs in the family, it's that no one runs in our family. So. <laughs> At one point, uh, Larry didn't even run, and uh, he got to run the five miles, and he runs five miles a day now, when I first w was working out with him. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Great. L Larry's a man, man. He, well, he <laughs> yeah, he seeked me out. At, well, he seeked out a trainer, and I went online, and, I went, and uh, me being a go-getter, I was like, I, went, I inboxed him right away. I was like, yo, you know, I, I do this, blah, 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 blah. One of the students uh, was recommending you, uh, Anthony. So... Yeah, and then, I, then we, we set up, and I sat in that room back there, and he talked to me. He goes, what makes you special? And then I told him, and then he goes, all right, come to my house. And then we started training, and the first time around, it was not even a quarter of the block, he was like, he's like, I can't do it. I'm like, no, Larry. And I'm pushing him in his back, and I'm pushing him in his back. And he remembers, right? And I'm pushing him. And then now, now, he just, now he just trucks along. I mean, we, not without any pain, but we do it. And I go to this house, well, five days a week. Let's go back for a second. I want to talk about diabetes for a second. More than 34 million Americans have diabetes. And at a, uh, one out of 10, and approximately 90, 95% of them have type 2. Now, type 2 is preventable. And I don't know if nobody knows that, but it's preventable. Do proper exercise and eating better, right? So, yeah, with insulin, it's the way your body releases insulin. It actually blocks the insulin. It blocks the, the sugar from going into the receptors. So... You want to you want to start eating a little better. You, it's a preventable disease, guys. We can take care of this. You don't have to be. It's ninety-five percent of us don't need that, right? All right, let's have some fun. Everybody, get up. <laughs> See this cool little thing right here. You're gonna love this. All right, I'm gonna teach you how a cue, uh, response, and a reward works. The first thing is going to be the cue, and this is the cue is going to be the sound, right? It doesn't matter what the, what the response reward is. It, the cue is always what's going to set off uh, the response. So when I do this, you're going to do it. And that signals jog in place. Everybody, come on, jog in place. All right. Hands up. Feel that energy? Come on. Now everybody start laughing. <laughs> louder, louder. <laughs> All right, relax. All right, you guys can sit down now. So that was, we had a little fun. And it, you, that's called a cue, a response, and then we get a reward. We all felt good. How do you guys feel right now? Feel a little energized? Yeah, come on, I want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> 
So you want to get that energy up. Uh, so it does feel good, right? So what you're, what's happening is you're releasing dopamine, and, and, and it's, it's that adrenaline and norepinephrine in your brain and within here that will allow you to, to get up and move. So just that little, it's a, what I was called a state change earlier. <laughs> <laughs> get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! All right. I'll get you a book. All right. So, so what I just talked about. That's called a cue. It's the trigger that signals it, and it starts the whole thing. This was the signal, right? That could be anything. That could be anything from uh, for smokers. They they see a commercial and a pack of cigarettes is a, well, it shows up. Were you a smoker at one point? All right, when he, I bet you as soon as he smells it or whatever, he's like, quickly, he wants to, he wants to smoke, right? And that, that's the trigger. That's the trigger right there. Now, the response is the habit, right? The habit itself is not bad. We all, we all have these habits that your brain doesn't know if it's good or bad. has no idea. has no idea. So when you do something, when, like for instance, like if, you're not, if you drink alcohol, <laughs> not an alcoholic, but if you drink alcohol, the response is right away, it releases dopamine in the brain. It's a quick, quick response. It doesn't know it's good or bad. It feels good. It did serve you at that point, but it's not good for you, right? And then the reward is the, the dopamine that's released. So that's what I call the habit loop is. And over time, we get rid of this thing. <laughs> over time, this is what it looks like. We got the cue. Let's, let's talk about when you wake up in the morning, right? Most of us have an alarm clock, right, or a phone now. There's our alarm clock. <clears throat> what, what do we usually do? Snooze. We do this. Is that, that's a bad habit, right? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and then uh, well, what's it look like? Here's the reward. You, you oversleep. What happens? You're late for work. And then it's called a habit stack, by the way, because it, it cycles. And then you're, you're hungry, and then you eat something that's not so good, which is the donut and the coffee on the right with the uh, sugar in it. So that's the bad habit that we're looking at right here. We want to get rid of that bad habit loop. It's a habit loop. It'll keep happening. And you, st you could stack a, another habit with a good habit. So you got to be careful with that, too. You could stack a bad habit within a good habit. So if you're doing a good habit and all of a sudden you start doing something that it's, doesn't serve you, you got you to be careful. Watch that, all right? So th that's called a habit stack. So we want to replace the old habits and make new habits, the ones that are bad, all right? Oh, that's where it comes in with the mindset. You have a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. And with the growth mindset, you're looking to change it. So you've got to do things that will, will help you change it with the growth mindset. Uh, things like mindful meditation helps out. I don't know if you guys, do you guys meditate at all? Anybody here meditate? How do you like it? Does it do you feel better after you meditate? <laughs> Calms, right? Right. So meditation. Also, the biggest thing is awareness. Awareness is the number one thing. That's how you change a habit. You're aware of it first. You know it's good. You know it doesn't serve you, right? Be aware of it. Another one, accountability. Somebody holds you accountable. That's another way to help you change a habit. So habits are formed from the brain. We got your free, free frontal cortex right here. That's where you take all your information in. So when you first start riding a bike, were you good at it? Anybody here good at riding a bike when you first started? No, no. But what happens over time, you get better at it. And then it gets transferred to what we call the striatum. That's the part of the brain that holds all the information in, so you don't have to keep doing it, keep relearning it. Because if you did, you wouldn't be able to do much, right? So like riding a car, too. If you're riding a car, when you first started doing it, you weren't so good at it. But now you can ride a car, and some people are, are looking at their texts, shouldn't be doing that. But it gets easier. Everything gets easier. And e we have more devices than ever, and we're looking all over the place. <clears throat> all right, so, so let's start over again. Here's the cue right here, the new cue. This is what I want you guys to start practicing. You're going to hear the alarm. What you're going to do is take that breath in and then breathe out like we talked about, to breathe, let's lift the dopamine level up. There's a good book, book out there by Mel Robbins, the five-second uh, rule, I think it's called. Am I right? And she talks about that right away. Get up and move. Five, four, three, two, one. I love it. Right? So the cue is you get up and you stretch. My cat stretches in the morning, and I'm like, it looks so good. It feels great. So that releases... A hormone, right? Serotonin, dopamine, and you get up. And you, what I like to do is I like to stretch out my lower back a little bit. Larry does his stretch with me sometimes. We sit down next to each other doing that. And then when in the morning, he exercises right away. He gets up and gets on the treadmill right away, or the, or the elliptical right away. So that's the cue. And then the response is you, you want to eat, you're hungry, you eat something healthy because you got up on time this time. 
You didn't sleep. You weren't sleeping. You didn't hit the snooze button anymore. And then last, you got to take a shower because you have time to take a shower. You don't smell anymore because before you were running out of the door, you're getting out of there, and you just wanted to get to work because you were late. So you take a shower and then you brush your teeth. And these are cute. These are this is called a habit loop. So you can create this with anything. You can create it, and it'll it'll get stuck here. It'll stay there. That's how you create the good habit. So you guys are all in real estate and the stock options here, that, right? So what happens is you get to work on time. Your customer, your customer's happy. You close the deal. You get great customer service. They're happy. You're happy. Everybody's full of energy, and you get to and you, that's it. That's the end of the day. So right there, you got everything you wanted because you did the, the, the new habit loop. So today, uh, I want to say we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act but a habit. It was made uh, said by Will Durant. So if you guys take away anything, does anybody have any questions on what habit or any questions? And if anybody has a habit they want to start or get rid of, uh, I would love to know right now. Do you have a habit? Do you have a habit? Do you have a habit? Who has a habit they want to change? I have a book for you if you do. Everyone eats healthy here? <laughs> Yeah, I have a strange I've addiction. I've seen all so those I'm, cookies you were eating outside. <laughs> so I've never been addicted to anything, but I have this strange addiction to soda where, like, I can't go two days without at least sipping it. And I, th I think I told you about this before, but sometimes, Green. like, I'll, I'll, I'll drink a, okay. a soda and then open the door up at a stoplight and pour it onto the ground <laughs> so I don't drink it all. all so right. that's I, – I don't know what triggers it uh, other than just – Continuing on with my day. All right, I'm gonna help you out right now. All right, so you you do you go and buy the soda all the time? I, I yeah, I buy the bottles like at Walgreens or something because like, I can't keep it in my house because I'll just drink all of it. Well, what? So is there another route you can go? To drive to drive to the store or something? To not to go to Wal the, go to a different store. That or, yeah, sometimes or, I go to Wawa. That Wawa has soda too. <laughs> yeah. Every freaking store. You know what? You mean stop going to the store? And I can, no. Uh, but you got you got you got to start replacing it. You can't just um, get it's too hard to get rid of it. So what I would do is pick up something else instead and then replace that. Something with seltzer in it might work for you because it is that bubbly, and that's probably what you're looking for mostly. So I would or uh, water would be good if he but he might he might be addicted to the bubbly feeling that he's tasting. Yeah, I right? drink water all day. Right, I, right. I drink like ten. <laughs> Damien. Oh, really? Yeah, I've never tried seltzer so water. So that that would be yeah, so, yeah, just like they said. Gordon, it might be that burn on his throat when he drinks it. Uh, might be the burn too, yeah. But you gotta replace it. If you don't replace the habit, it'll be on, it's gonna be very, very. So you can only stay away from something for so long until you pick it back up, All right? Am I, am I right? Yeah. No. Here, Brand, Do you have a question for me? Wait, you wanna, wait hold on one second. Go ahead. I think it's the sugar in the soda because, like me, I'm addicted to cherry Pepsi, and sometimes I have to really. Yeah, hold on a second. Yeah. Hello. So I think it's the sugar that's in the soda that kind of grabs everybody because I'm addicted to cherry Pepsi and sometimes I gotta fight myself to like drink cranberry juice or something like that or, or little bottles of water. And it's like every so often I can push myself away from it but as soon as I turn around, maybe I could do it for about a month. But as soon as I grab that one soda, that's it. It's like I'm back to it again. Two and three sodas. And yeah, drink. you're gonna have to wean yourself off of it. Slowly, right? You know, it, it, when you're addicted to something like that, it's not, it's not that you're addicted to it uh, physically. You're addicted to it emotionally because you're, you're attaching it to something. It might be you come home at the same time every night you have this meal or you have this. Right. It's, it's, it, it's time, people, places, things, uh, habits. Right? So we wanna, what you want to do is replace it with, with something. You've got to replace it. If you don't, you're going to be a hell of a time right. to get rid of it. You know, hell of a time to get rid of it. So if you're, if that's your thing, then find something else that's sweet that maybe has like an artificial sweetener in it, like sucralose. A lot of people don't like artificial sweeteners, but for somebody like that right now, like you right now, right. you wanna, you, you're gonna wanna replace it. Because like when I eat, Stevie dinner, is a good one too. When, when I eat dinner, yeah. it's like dinner is not complete in case I have something sweet right after. It's like it, pizza. It's like if if I'm sitting back and I can have a nice healthy meal, I do not feel complete in case I have a cake. Or something, it's like it offsets everything. It makes everything balance out so for me. Find a healthier alternative that's sweet. That's, I, I'm telling you. It's not uh, hard to find. <laughs> it's not hard to find. <laughs> uh, who wants to go next? I have one. Um, right, could you, Shane, could you hand in the book? Could, uh, the, the ones that answer questions? So basically, after after strength training. Oh, yeah, I was like, look, look. After, <laughs> after strength training, um, I was going to say sugar addiction, but after strength training, you know, how do you control the carb overload? Because you're constantly wanting to eat more. 
through strength training. I do swimming regularly, but when I do strength training, I'm extremely hungry all the time. That's a fantastic question. That. She said she's hungry right after working out. She wants sugar. So what she could do is a, what I call filler foods. So vegetables are a big one. And what I like to use is broccoli uh, or something. I don't really, I'm not a big salad person. Some people say salad. I'm not a big salad person. I, li I like broccoli, I like string beans, because they're, they're, they're dense. They're, I mean, they're big and they're dense. You could eat a lot. If you eat enough of them, your, your stomach will feel full. And that, that's my biggest takeaway from that. Like, and oatmeal's a good one. Do you have a question? Yeah. OK. Not the full meal. All right. Well, she goes first, though. So. <laughs> Hi. I'm just like the gentleman over here. I'm diabetic. And the thing is, the worst for me is to have that. I have to have something sweet. But what I have learned, I've tried to like eat like a piece of um, fruit instead of like a cake or something. So yeah. I don't know. Can you help me out? <laughs> I mean, I, I just got to have sweet. What can I do? Well, fruit is a good one. Fruit's actually the, a great option. I, I'd say uh, apples, uh, bananas, uh, berries are really good. Yeah, I've bit. been doing a lot of blueberries, strawberries, it, and stuff like that. Yeah, That's so, what I've been doing. Yeah, they have uh, fiber in it, which is thermogenic, which actually helps burn more calories. But if I still you, sometimes want that cake. I know. Well, <laughs> it, see, here's what you can do. What you do is you... I, I, Treat yourself you got to be careful with. People that are addicted to food, when they treat themselves with food as a reward, it can go right, they can go right back into that habit loop again. But you know what? The only thing that really helps me a lot, and I'm going to say this to you, young man, think about being diabetic. I think about needles. I'm petrified of needles. So my suggestion to you and everybody in here, I'm petrified of needles. So that's <laughs> what kind of get me kind of So your, yours is fear-based. You oh. you know, yeah. Uh, let me, let me say, that, say that one line again to me, though. I want to hear something real quick. Huh? You say that one line. You said you have to have it. Well, I, I have to have it, but then I realize that needle that's comes a, behind. That, yeah, right. well, that's a mindset change you got to do there. That's a, that's a whole different, deep, uh, different type of work you got to be doing with yourself. Well, you have to have a different self-talk. I'm kind of like, you know, for the last two weeks, I've been getting pretty good. But all I think about that needle... Adele, yeah, we're yeah. going to help you with that. Don't yeah, worry. I can I'm help you with on that. You. <laughs> yeah, I, all right. I can help you change your mindset. All right, so let's give a hand to Gordon. Thank you so much, Gordon. I'm gonna, he's going to help me lose my baby weight soon. Thank you, guys. All right.